dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. Thomas Jefferson lives. He's Ron Paul. He's, if Jefferson lived today, he would rail about the Federal Reserve. He wouldn't like that. He'd be appalled by our ongoing wars, our nonstop wars. Jefferson said, the less you use power, the greater it becomes. Uh, compared to uh, Ron Paul said, you sacrifice liberty for security, you lose both. So this sentiment is still in the American bloodstream. It's I will promise you this, that if we have not gotten our troops out by the time I am president, it is the first thing I will do. I will get our troops home. We will bring an end to this war. You can take that to the bank. And now the plain truth. As you've seen on our show, the government at times tells you lies. The deception is historic and continuous. Does the government want you to know that it has killed innocent civilians in Afghanistan? Of course not. Does it want you to know that it has dispatched hit squads to kill civilians in Afghanistan that it hates and fears in violation of American law, Afghan law, and international law? Of course not. Does the government want its dirty laundry aired on national TV? No, it doesn't. But in our society, based on the rule of law, the Constitution guarantees the natural right to gather information about the government, to think about it as we wish, to speak about it as we think, and to publish about the government whatever we want to say. The government needs to be exposed because it cannot be trusted to expose itself. The people now feel like they've been lied to. They call them dishonest, and there's a lot to that. Politicians tend to uh, say things and they don't follow through, whether it's in the category of lying or not. But it certainly is a lot of untruths that are passed around. President now. Obama stated emphatically today that the American military mission in Libya does not fall under the jurisdiction of the 1973 War Powers Resolution. The administration's p position has angered not only many Republicans on Capitol Hill, but many Democrats as well. We're I'm joined not a Supreme Court Justice, so I'm not, I'm not going to uh, 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 put, put my constitutional law professor hat on here. Do I think that uh, our actions in any way violate the War Powers Resolution? The answer is no. So I don't even have to get to the constitutional question. Simply, sir, what's your reaction? <laughs> That's a horrible statement. Madam Speaker, for some, patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. For others, it means dissent against a government's abuse of the people's rights. I've never met a politician in Washington, or any American for that matter, who chose to be called unpatriotic. Nor have I met anyone who did not believe he wholeheartedly supported our troops wherever they may be. But I have heard, all too frequently, from the various individuals, is sharp accusations that because their political opponents disagree with them on the need for foreign military entanglements, they were unpatriotic, un-American, evildoers deserving contempt. The original American patriots were those individuals brave enough to resist with force the oppressive power of King George. I accept the definition of patriotism as that effort to resist oppressive state power. More complaints of absurd pat-downs by the TSA. This time the air traveler isn't a kid, but an elderly woman who was forced to remove her adult diaper. A Florida woman says security agents asked her 95-year-old mother, who is in a wheelchair, to remove her diaper so they could complete a full search. Um. Currently, the invasive pat-down searches are random and not based on risk assessment? No, actually, they are based on intelligence that we know specifically from Christmas Day, Abdul Matab, and the way he concealed that device. There are some random uh, pat-downs, if that's what you're referring to, but, but it is based on the intelligence. Right. So I guess this little girl would be part of the random pat-down. This is the little girl that from Bowling Green, Kentucky, one of my constituents. They're still quite unhappy with you guys, as well as uh, myself and a lot of other of America that thinks you're, you've gone overboard and you're missing the boat on terrorism because you're uh, doing these invasive searches on six-year-old girls. For some trips, it'll be faster than flying. Without the pat down. Now, the defense budget may not have been at the top of the agenda at yesterday's presidential debate, but that doesn't mean that the candidates got off easy. 
Now keep in mind it was a recent CNN poll that showed that 48% of Americans believe another Great Depression may hit in the next year. So what kind of hard-hitting questions did CNN pose to the candidates? Well, let's take a look. Elvis or Johnny Cash? Oh, that's really tough. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Leno or Conan? Uh, I'm I'd neither. Probably Leno. Dancing with the Stars or American Idol? American Idol. Deep dish or thin crust? Deep dish. I'm sorry, what? Unemployment just went up to 9.0%. Half of all unemployed Americans have been out of work for at least six months. 44 million Americans are on food stamps. American home sales dropped 6.3 trillion. That's with a T dollars since the housing crisis began. And the Fed is printing dollars like toilet paper. And we're asking the next potential president of the United States about pizza. Really? Something's out of whack. Please somebody with a child's mind would ask such mindless questions. It's the presidential reality show. We just saw it live. None of these candidates, again with the exception of Paul, is indistinguishable from the other. So it's, it's quite disgraceful what went on in New Hampshire and what the Cartoon News Network calls the debate. But before I go, I, I gotta say, just as, a, as an observer, uh, a relatively new uh, voice in the political conversation these past couple of years, I look at the Republican field, I see, you know, Palin, Bachman, Pawlenty, uh, Mitt Romney, uh, Donald Trump, I think, is going to is talking about it. Some interesting people, some smart people in that mix. There's no way any of them are better than you for the Republican nomination. Let's just be <laughs> seriously. No, I mean, and when you look at the, your articulation of the actual, I'm not saying your answers are all right. I don't know whether your answers are all right or not. But I do know the way that you frame the debate around the issues that this country faces is the most honest of m almost any politician that I deal with. D do you not have an obligation at this point to run for president? It's an American cause. It's a cause of freedom. There's something going on in this country, and it's 